I'm Essie Hinton, but you can call me Susie. I'm here at the Admiral Wynn Drive-In. This is a theater where I went often as a kid, and when I was writing The Outsiders, I used this location for an incident in the book. Bring me a coat! I don't have enough money! This is the area where we set up with chairs like it was in my day when I was a teenager. Usually the kids that sat in front of the concession stand were the kids that walked in and paid a quarter. So you normally didn't see girls like Cherry and Marsha sitting out here. But I was out here one evening and I saw girls having a fight with their boyfriends, get out of the car and, and sit over in the chairs in kind of a mad huff. And that inspired the incident that I later wrote into the book and then later we shot here at the movies. Are you sure you want to do this? I came here to see a movie and I'm going to see a movie. Diane was absolutely picture perfect for Cherry. She and Matt had this funny little flirtation, irritation, flirtation, irritation thing going with each other, very much like Dallas and Cherry Valance did in the book. I didn't know you had this problem with yelling in my face. The night we shot here <laughs> was freezing cold, and when Tommy says, no, 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 man, I'm freezing, freezing he really meant it. Why didn't you bring a coat, stupid? Got it. One of the funny incidents that happened that night, when Dallas falls out of his chair trying to put the make on Sherry, it wasn't supposed to happen. That was not rehearsed. In fact, if you look, you can see Tommy Howe look at Francis, expecting him to say cut, while they all laugh. But Matt climbed up like the trooper and went on with the shot. What a Huh? I said you're a clown. Shut up. Every once in a while it still plays at this theater and you can see from the highway and one time I was driving down the highway and I looked over and there was the outsiders playing and it was the drive-in scene and that was a layer on layer on layer of weird. Here we are at Will Rogers High School. This is where I went to high school. This is where I first became extremely aware of all the groups, the socias and the greasers. I wrote The Outsiders while I was a junior here. I wrote it for a lot of reasons. The first was I just liked to write. I loved to read and I wrote it because I was mad about the social situation of everybody getting into their little groups and staying in their little groups and not having friends outside their groups. So I took the two extremes to write about the greasers and the socias. When I was in high school, I saw a lot of rough things going on. There was none of this in the literature at that time. So. The Outsiders is usually credited with starting the trend toward realistic young adult fiction. My job in The Outsiders of Film, well, I was Greaser Den Mother. The boys were here with no adult supervision, and so I tried to look after them. Francis would ask me to look over the dialogue and cut it as needed. And it was really fascinating because he took the book and he outlined the thought in one color, the action in one color, and the dialogue in one color, and kind of just chopped the book up into pieces like that. And from there wrote the screenplay. There's very little I didn't do on The Outsiders, including getting a little part where I played the nurse that was being hassled by Dallas, which by then being hassled by Matt was so comfortable. What's happened to your gown? I threw it away. I'm going to be so get mad out. when just you're Just get out. You're making, me, making my stomach Thank sick. <laughs> Francis came here and while he was here, he said, well, would you drive me around and show me places that you were thinking about when you wrote the book? So I took him to the Admiral Twin Drive-In and my high school, Will Rogers High School, and neighborhoods like I was thinking about. And he said, no, this is great, I'll shoot here. We're here at the Curtis house. This is where the Curtis brothers lived in the movie. One day, Francis said, Susie, we found the Curtis house. Do you want to see it? And I said, sure. He said, well, I'll take you there on my bike. And I thought he meant a motorcycle. But we get out there, and he had a big old fat-tired bicycle, which he put 60 pounds of camera equipment in the basket, got me on the bar, and pedaled me over to this house. And of course, we were falling all over the place. But it was a fun ride, and that was my introduction to the house. It was here that we introduced the characters one by one. And I think this opening gives us a lot more background about who these people are and what happens later at the drive-in. Hey, who's looking for police trouble, man? I just want to go see a movie like the good old days, right, Johnny? The boys were so much fun. They really had a good bonding experience. Ain't gonna hurt you. This is the street where Dallas died, where he was shot down by the policeman. Action! Freeze! 
That was a rough night shoot because Matt had the little gunshot squibs taped to his bare skin since he left the hospital with just a jacket on. And when those squibs went off, it hurt. I think Matt did a great job as Dallas. I actually recommended him to Francis. Matt and I had worked together on my movie Tex, and I was very impressed with his acting ability. He really has that little swagger that Dallas was supposed to have. It's just been amazing to me how this book keeps speaking to each new generation, because now parents are giving their children the book and saying, I really like this when I was a kid, I bet you will too.